Uh, hi there. So it's um, so the hello to our friends. So I nice to meet Alai. So we're very happy to join this uh, the, the the very important uh, the the session. So which is about uh, the CTO the opening uh, technique. And uh, I, I'm Dr. Wu from a uh, full hospital, uh, the, the the National Center for Cardiovascular Disease. And uh, this afternoon, so. Uh, uh, our other friend, so Professor Liu Jinghua from Anzhen Hospital, and uh, from the Liu Wei from uh, Ji Shu Tan Hospital. So we will chair this session. And um, uh, maybe the, the first speaker, uh, I let, let me look at uh, the, the, the program. The chairman, uh, of conference chairman, uh, one of yeah, So the, maybe the, oh, the first, so. So the, the chairman of this session is the is the, the Professor Wang Lefeng and uh, who is the, the director of uh, the the cardiology uh, the, the cardiology in Chaoyang Hospital and uh, he is also chairman of this uh, this the, the 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 congress. So and uh, first of all, so I the let uh, the Professor Wang Lefeng to give us the uh, opening the speech. Welcome, the uh... Professor, it's uh, my great honor to have uh, this uh, Sino European session to introduce the Avia uh, Type B balloon to, uh, to the colleagues, uh, both China and Euro European the colleagues. Uh, first, I would uh, introduce uh, the guest speaker from uh, uh, Greek. The Dr. Loni is uh, Welcome. Uh, Dr. Navin Chandler uh, from uh, from uh, UK. UK. Uh, we'll kind of you Chandler from UK. Dr. Hugo, uh, uh, Dr. Joshua Cha from the UK, and uh, Dr. Hugo Vinhas from uh, Portugal. Uh, yeah, now we will invite Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Chiofotis to give the first uh, speech, please. We can uh, hear you. Not open the 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 microphone. Okay. Good morning from Greece, from Athens. Can you hear me now? Yeah, very good. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I'm very glad to be with you, and uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the company inviting me to be among uh, excellent uh, operators and uh, share our knowledge about uh, chronic total occlusion issues. This is about uh, uncrossable CTO and uh, how small profile balloons can make the difference in these cases. Let's see the cases. Uh, it's about the first one is about a, a man 60 years old with a coronary obstructive pulmonary disease. He was hypertensive and dyslipidemic and he had the exceptional angina, CCS grade two, with the uh, ejection fraction 45% and hypokinesia in inferior posterior wall. The coronary angiogram revealed the CTO growing total occlusion of uh, uh, right coronary artery and the uh, tight stenosis of proximal LAT. This is his angiogram. You can see the lesion in proximal LAD and uh, you can see the totally occluded Proximally, a right coronary artery with uh, no stump at all and uh, two uh, branches uh, coming out. There's a, a good uh, collateral net. So, in first uh, procedure, uh, we just uh, put a stent in the proximal LED uh, easily and uh, with a very good result. And you have the second procedure. You can see the proximal part of RCA occluded. 
Here you see the double injection. You can see that uh, it's a, a blind uh, point. It's blunt stamp, no stamp at all, with a branch at proximal mm -hmm. cap. So it's um, according to according to the hybrid CTO crossing algorithm and uh, seeing the mm -hmm. appropriate uh, interventional collaterals and the ambitious proximal cap, we decided to go uh, retrograde first uh, approach for this uh, totally occluded right coronary artery. We know there are four options to cross uh, CTO lesions. We can go undergrade through the true lumen. We can go undergrade with dissection, go in uh, subintimal space and then re-enter uh, distally in uh, true lumen. And you can uh, go the same way uh, by retrograde access, uh, going true to true and dissection and re retrogradely. So in this case, we uh, had first choice to go retro. We did the septal surfing with uh, uh, a SWOG 03 uh, wire and uh, supporting from a microcatheter for share pro excess. We, we chose and we, we tried some uh, uh, collaterals and found finally the one that seemed uh, uh, more uh, easy to go. And uh, that was uh, for true. You can see the saw found the way, but it seems it wasn't uh, at, uh, and uh, wasn't a septal branch, but it seemed uh, it turned to be epicardial, but it didn't stop us. We continued the, our uh, process. So, after that, we changed the, the retro wire to a, a Gaia second and exchange uh, after with a Gladius CX. Well, uh, Gladius CX found a way to proximal cap, but uh, uh, MC microcatheter could not follow uh, the wire, so uh, we didn't push too much because we were, um, uh, finally, we were uh, in a picardial. Uh, uh, branch so we just uh, put the wire till, till proximal mm -hmm. cap and then we used the retro wire just a marker so we did just marker technique and the uh, integrate conquest pro 12 confianza mm -hmm. uh, wire punctured the proximal cap and followed the road that uh, the, beside the retrograde wire this is how this technique works. You see, it, it has uh, reached uh, the distal cap and then exchange to Gladius EX. The Confianza exchange to Gladius EX and uh, we had successful pass distally. But uh, then started the problem. It, well, it's, it proved to be uncrossable, this lesion. So we didn't uh, couldn't uh, reach a, a 1.0 balloon and uh, we did uh, in these cases you have to uh, to give a solution about that you have to to improve support or to do lesion modification so uh, what do you what do you have exactly to do you have to increase support you have a, a, to give a, a greater support within another guide or use a guide extensor or do anchoring techniques you have to use small profile balloon inflation for predilation. That's what we did, and that's how this uh, balloon works. Uh, you have to do a uh, grenadoplasty. We did that, but it didn't work. You have to uh, switch to smaller profile catheter. You have to switch to stiffer catheter. You have to do laser atherectomy, external carpress. You, you can do also Carlino technique with injecting into the body of the CTO or deliver a short of the wire for rotation atherectomy. In this case, you have to sacrifice by position. It's not uh, easy. Or you have to go retrograde. So uh, in this case, we used, uh, after gradoplasty, uh, we used a small profile balloon inflation. And it was time for Alveo HP uh, 0.75 and uh, gave a great help because um, it uh, could go all the way by inflating step by step. This is a, a Alva HP balloon dilatation catheter. Uh, it's uh, the smallest high pressure CTO balloon catheter. It's ideal for CTO lesion and for complex calcified lesions. 
here is how it works. And after that, we could uh, inflate bigger balloons and uh, put uh, our stents easily. And this is a final result, final geographic result. All the branches uh, in their position and the uh, happy patient and happy doctor. This was the first case. This is another case about a man 62 years old with a free medical history. This epidemic, no, no history of angina or uh, MI. He had um, uh, worsening angina uh, since uh, two weeks with a good ejection fraction and the positive uh, stress test. His coronary antigram revealed two CTOs, and uh, RCA CTO and the uh, coronal syncoflex uh, CTO. Um, you see, uh, first approach, we had to open the, uh, we, we, chose, we chose to open the uh, circoflex artery. It seemed uh, not as difficult, uh, a low JCTO score. It seems to, to be with uh, micro channels and limited gap. But after all, it's circoflex and it's, it's, uh, it has its own difficulties. According to the hybrid CTO uh, crossing algorithm and uh, uh, comparing the, the proximal cap and the uh, not the too big length of uh, occlusion, we decided uh, to go anti greatly. And uh, we were right because uh, a filter XT wire passed easily, uh, although it went easily. See the next video. Uh, it seemed uh, it proved to be uncrossable. Um, during our attempt to, to push a small wire, uh, we lost wire position. You can see here. But we were lucky to pass again the filter XT. And then we used the Alveo HP 0, uh, 0.75 with a step-by-step -step inflation procedure. And uh, we could advance distally. Here you see the balloon. After that, we, we had a bigger balloon and uh, After standing, we have a very good result. And the next uh, days we did the uh, RCA with no problem. So the patient was uh, fine. The key learning point from this presentation is that the uncrossable CTO lesion is not an uncommon problem. We can find it uh, every time we, have the, we deal with uh, these cases, every CTO can uh, prove to be uncrossable. So, Every, every operator who deals with these cases has to have all the weapons on the battlefield. You have to have all, everything that will help you to finish the, the, the case. Before which I, uh, nuclear weapons, a small profile balloon maybe gives a solution. And in many, many cases, this is the way that we cross these uncrossable city lesions. Even in the borders of the uncrossable lesion or plaque, small uh, profile balloon inflation will modificate uh, the, the plaque and we could uh, pass after that step-by-step -step inflation and the small uh, advance is uh, the way to, to go in this procedure. And this Alveo HP balloon with a fine profile is undoubtedly a very useful tool that everyone should have in his cat lab uh, dealing with these uh, cases. Uh, that uh, that is my my presentation. I want to, uh, to add something. I I, have all, I used it uh, uh, yesterday in another case. I didn't manage to to put it in the presentation. It wasn't a CTO, but it was a, a branch that uh, would, I could not uh, uh, inflate uh, through the struts. So a very small profile balloon can inflate and pass through the struts if there is a problem with that, and then. Uh, pass bigger balloons. 
this is uh, from me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Thank uh, you. Dr. Chiang Fortis. Uh, what's uh, your usually uh, dilating pressure in this uh, profile problem? Yeah, you know, I, I, it's, it's ideal for going about up to 20 uh, uh, atmospheres. You can, you can go up to 20, and uh, I use it uh, this high. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, any question from uh, the professors? Yes, uh, and, um, Dr. Uh, Fortis. And uh, you, you know, it's uh, it's very uh, good uh, cases and uh, educational uh, typical case. You know, the first because you know uh, it's uh, very common uh, sense for a uh, blunt stamp with side range. You know, it's uh, very very difficult to perform PCI with uh, by uh, undergrade approach. So most of them can perform PCI by a uh, approach. You know. You know, we can say the rich clotary from the uh, uh, LAD to the to the right, uh, but uh, but uh, in this, this case, you know, we we can say the um, clotary from the epicardial and to the to the uh, middle RC. You know, so we can say it's uh, it's very weak support because the because you know uh, we can advance the the micro cases to the distal. Uh, this is the epicardial coronary, uh, can't reach the, uh, the uh, undergrade, uh, un, uh, undergrade guiding cassette. So in this situation, we can, um, we can um, uh, perform the perform pickup or uh, another uh, technique uh, and uh, uh, in order to, the, uh, uh, in order to uh, facilitate the risk rate while going to the, uh, the undergrade guiding cassette. After that, you know, we, we can perform uh, so many uh, techniques such as the uh, such as the uh, rendezvous or uh, keep in and uh, finish the, the wire as uh, uh, wire externalization. So, uh, you, you know, the, of, of course, we can perform the mark wire technique and uh, and you uh, uh, using the risk with the wire as the the mark wire and finish the integrated wiring. But uh, but uh, you know um, the difficult uh, uh, difficulty it's uh, is only uh, exist there because the tight and closed lesion there. So uh, in this situation, we can perform the uh, rotational aspirectomy or laser rectomy. Of course, we can we can perform them. But uh, if we you we we have the the tiny the the tiny balloon. Uh, of course, uh, like, like, like you uh, perform the, the the technique, we can use the so so uh, tiny profile uh, balloon cross the cross the lesion very easy. So finally, we can see the excellent uh, result. Thank you, thank you. I agree. You know, it's, I agree. I agree. It's, yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this. Uh, but uh, but I don't know um, what's the 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 uh, burst pressure. What, what was the burst pressure? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know. Uh, nominal, nominal, it was nominal nominal pressure. It's uh, only in twenty uh, twelve, and. Uh, and uh, reached the burst uh, uh, pressure twenty two, so it's the the the, the long component balloon, like 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 most uh, long component balloon. So so this 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 uh, balloon is uh, very helpful for for uh, yeah. for setial closing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That's that's why it it helps a lot in these cases. Yeah. Professor, uh, Professor uh, Inice. So it's a good lecture, and um, it's very difficult for uh, crossing the CTO lesions once the CTO lesions has a uh, has a calcium nodules, a uh, calcium nodule, and uh, if the occlusion part is very calcified, so 
Um, and for this kind of situation, uh, we can use this uh, small profile balloon, or we can use a uh, laser apparectomy. And how could you decide that uh, the digital wire is in the uh, in the true lumen instead of the uh, instead of the false lumen? Or could you advance the uh, balloon if you cannot confirm your wire, your digital wire is in the true lumen? Yeah. You know, I, I, I was sure it was in true lumen because it was free and I had an ejection from the left coronal system and uh, it was in true lumen. It was moving freely and I felt that it was really in it. So I, I had no doubts about that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, thanks once, uh, once again. Uh, Dr. Uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, his 40s. And the uh, next speaker is um, um, Dr. Navin Chando uh, from uh, United Kingdom. Uh, he's, uh, he's the uh, consultant uh, uh, interventional cardiologist from Health NHS Foundation Trust. And uh, his topic is the uh, balloon unclosable coronary lesions, please. Okay, can you uh, can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Good, good, and I hope you can. I hope you can see my uh, slides as well. So, um, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, speak today. Um, I'm going to be talking on a similar theme of balloon uncrossable coronary lesions, um, and I'm going to present two cases. Um, again, you're going to see some of the similar messages that we saw from the first talk. Um, uh, but oh, sorry, let me just get this. Work so um, for the purpose of, uh, I guess, understanding our terminology, a, a balloon uncrossable lesion um, is defined as lesions that cannot be crossed after successful guide wire crossing. And as mentioned by one of the other uh, panelists, after confirmation of guide wire placement in a true distal lumen. This occurs actually in around six to nine percent of all CTO cases, but is also found in non-occlusive lesions. And I'll show you a case of each of those examples um, coming up. Often when you are faced with balloon and crossable lesions, it is due to either severe calcification and or tortuosity within the lesion itself as well. And there is now a, a relatively well accepted algorithmic approach that was published um, uh, last year by uh, Brulakis and colleagues in um, uh, yeah, I think it was in, in, in April 20, 2020. And this algorithm is quite well accepted now. And, it, and the aim of this, of each step of these, of this um, approach to uh, balloon and crossbow lesions is to first of all, try to modify the lesion and or increase support for then the subsequent delivery of equipment. And you'll see there are, there are several steps really, but sequential and simultaneous application are often required to achieve successful outcomes. So the first case I'm going to talk to you about is a 68-year-old male who presented as an acute presentation. His ECG is as shown with some anterior ST elevation and some T-wave inversion also in the anterior leads. His troponin was elevated at over 700 and he had no other modifiable risk factors for coronary artery disease. So we see the diagnostic coronary angiograms here and you see that the LAD demonstrates uh, diffuse disease in the proximal to mid vessel and a critical thrombotic lesion in the mid vessel, which uh, is consistent with the acute presentation and the ECG changes. You'll also note, however, a chronic occlusion in the left circumflex system. And you can see that this, fills, this vessel fills retrogradely and it almost looks like a trifurcating system from what we can see at this point. The right coronary artery is a dominant vessel, uh, relatively free from disease. 
So our index admission was to treat the culprit, which was the LAD, and I must say a relatively straightforward procedure, um, essentially wiring ballooning into the LAD, two drug-eluting stents implanted, a 3.0 a 3 uh, millimeter stent in the mid-vessel and a 3.5 millimeter stent in the proximal vessel with a good angiographic result, as you can see. So our next plan at this stage, after the patient was stabilized on the ward, started on appropriate medical therapy, also had an echocardiogram, which showed preserved left ventricular systolic function. And so our plan as a stage procedure was to consider PCI to the left circumflex CTO. So you, you see here our setup shots, and you can see that um, the, 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 the circumflex is a trifurcating system, and there's a quite slightly obscure entry into the distal parts of the vessel where those three branches of the OMs are. Um, and this is why this is what, what we tried to do to set up uh, to try and achieve this uh, uh, procedure with a successful outcome. So we already from the outset tried to maximize support. We used a seven French EBU system. We had a plan for anti-grade wire escalation. Uh, there wasn't really a, a, a safe retrograde option, given that we only have collaterals coming from the distal um, LAD territory back into the uh, to the circumflex. Um, we set up from the outset to use microcatheter support, and in this case, this was a Corsair. But you can see from the, the, the video there that we had a challenge mainly due to the sort of tortuosity and angulation into the lesion complex itself that meant that the uh, it was very difficult to get the wire to pass into the true lumen and get our microcatheter to follow. Uh, ultimately, however, you can see that we managed to do that. You can still see some buckling of the microcatheter on the first panel, um, again, highlighting some of the difficulties of getting through this lesion. But ultimately, we did succeed and we proved our wire position with a distal tip injection via the microcatheter, a technique I'm not often a fan of, but only really resort to when I don't really have retrograde options to tell me that I'm in a safe uh, position once we've crossed the lesion. So that's what we did here. You can see from that video that there's contrast in the distal vessel and some branches, which is reassuring to set, tell us that we're in a true, uh, in a true lumen, in a safe position to start the, the rest of our procedure. So we, um, uh, we had, the, the lesion was actually crossed with the Pilot 200. The course was advanced, as you saw. We confirmed true lumen with the distal tip injection. At this point, we uh, switched our wire to a stiffer wire to, again, further increase support. And we used a grand slam for this procedure going forward. Um, I was unable to pass a 10 by 20 millimeter sapphire balloon, even with a uh, guide liner in situ. Uh, sorry, a, a guide zilla in situ as a guide extension uh, system. But ultimately, you can see from the video, we were able to cross with the Alveo 0.75 uh, by 15 uh, millimeter balloon. And this allowed us to predilate. And we followed this with subsequent further predilatation with a 10. 1.5 and a 2.0 balloon and you start to see what the what the vessel really looks like here and you can see now as we suspected from our um, original images that it's a trifurcating system and obviously we had a, a, a kind of approach to what would our stenting strategy be here i actually opted for a, a tap procedure with a stent from the proximal circumflex into the second om and performed a, a, a tap with a, a second set going into the, uh, the larger branch superiorly of the OM1, uh, and that was our angiographic result. So in summary, this was a, um, a CTO of the left circumflex with successful PCI in a patient with ongoing symptoms, having already undergone PCI to the LAD as an index procedure. We used a number of sequential but simultaneous techniques to facilitate crossing this balloon and crossable lesion. And that included using guide support with a seven French guide system and guide extension, using a microcatheter, switching to a stiffer wire at the appropriate time, and using a, a small, low, ultra low profile balloon to help us when our initial ballooning had failed. Uh, the second case um, is a similar sort of story, a 70 year old man who will present it again acutely. Um, this is more, I guess, of a, a non-ST elevation myocardial infarction with T-wave inversion and some um, uh, a, a raised troponin. He did have important risk factors, including type 2 diabetes, hypertension, and hypercholesterolemia. The diagnostic angiograms here show, first of all, uh, severe diffuse disease in the proximal to mid LAD. And you'll also see the circumflex has uh, severe disease, but this is a smaller caliber, uh, smaller caliber vessel. The right coronary artery, um, a dominant vessel, uh, again, a large caliber, but a critical lesion in the proximal vessel and some further disease in the mid vessel as well. 
So again, as our index admission, we treated the LAD as the culprit for his problems, a relatively straightforward procedure. Again, we used uh, an EBU, 620 EBU guide catheter, um, provisional stenting technique across the LAD and the diagonals, uh, and one long stent implanted, um, which was a 3.5 by 38 design stent with a good angiographic result. Um, at the same time of the index procedure, I did think to myself it would be worth trying to uh, open the right coronary artery as well. So you can see from the angiograms here, I had an AL1 catheter. I was from a, a right radial approach here. I must say wiring the lesion was very straightforward, and we confirmed our wire position from different um, uh, angiographic projections. But I must say the um, delivery of balloons was, was actually harder than anticipated. I tried a 1-0 balloon at this time with a guideline of support, was unsuccessful. And you can see that ultimately we lost guide wire and um, uh, wire and guide position. But the patient was stable, so we stopped. We thought we'll get all our, our extra information, including an echocardiogram to assess the LV function, optimize medical therapy and see how they are from a symptom perspective before thinking about reassessing and readdressing the lesion, other coronary lesions, in particular in the right coronary artery. So ultimately, um, uh, we went on to proceed for, as a staged procedure to the right coronary artery. On this occasion, I actually went by the, the left transradial artery approach, mainly to try and have a more natural course uh, for the guide catheter to take to, uh, again, also hopefully assist with guide support. I also use an AR1 um, diagnostic catheter, which was a seven French, um, what I will say, which you probably can't appreciate from the angiogram images, he has quite a short aortic route. So the right catheter fitting snugly into the coronary artery was a challenge. And so the AR1 seemed to be the best option for us going forward. Again, uh, crossing the, with a wire was, was quite easy. Um, but again, we had challenges and were unable to cross with a 1-0 by 20 sapphire balloon, despite balloon wedging um, technique. So... We, all, we did ultimately, again, relatively easily cross with a 0.75 by 15 alveo balloon, uh, which you can see here embedded into the lesion. We predilated to high pressure. Um, uh, but actually, despite that, we weren't able to then cross with any subsequent balloons of higher, of, higher, of higher profile. And that was including with balloon wedge techniques and grenadoplasty. So ultimately, we actually decided that we had to now consider an atherectomy approach, and we opted for rotational atherectomy. Um, again, because of the fibrotic and calcific nature of this lesion, we did have to sacrifice wire position. So we embedded our microcatheter uh, into the uh, proximal entry of the lesion, switched our wire out to a rotor floppy wire, and performed three runs of rotablation using a 1.25 millimeter burr at 180,000 um, revolutions per minute. Um, you'll see at the end of this run uh, that we do finally manage to cross. It was actually quite a tough. Uh, quite a tough lesion to, to crack. So we, um, uh, you, you'll see actually from the first video that even despite rotablation with a 1.25 millimeter burr, our next balloon that we tried, which was a 2.0 balloon, still has some wasting in the middle, um, which again told us about the kind of complexity of the nature of this lesion. But ultimately, with a, with a non-compliant balloon at high pressure, we were able to predilate this lesion satisfactorily and then perform sequential predilatation with uh, 2.5s and then 3.0, 3.5 non-compliant balloons to try and achieve better expansion. And we, we implanted a stent from the mid back to the osteal right coronary using a 3.5 by 38 millimeter stent, postulated approximately with a 4.0 by uh, 20 millimeter non-compliant balloon with a good angiographic result. So in summary, this was a fibrocalcific lesion in the right coronary in a patient with ongoing symptoms um, we used, again, successful techniques to facilitate crossing the balloon uncrossable lesion here. Uh, in this case, we used guide support and guide extension. We used ultimately required um, uh, a small balloon with the alveo to get us across, but it helped us to a degree, but we weren't able to really predilate the lesion satisfactorily. So then upped the, uh, uh, the ante by using rota rotational atherectomy and then switched to a, a stiff wire to, to complete the procedure with a good angiographic result. So I guess in, in, in closing, I'll, I'll show that algorithm again. I, uh, I think it's very important for all uh, CTO operators or people with an interest in developing in CTO to have an awareness of these different techniques and be able to quite fluidly and rapidly combine uh, a number of these steps simultaneously to achieve uh, the best results where possible.
Um, I will say that the Alveo balloon, I think, is uh, uh, is an attractive balloon in, in, in certain cases, particularly with CTOs, because his ultra low profile has a, a, a high pressure capability. Um, it actually has a very high rate, uh, an average rated blood pr- uh, uh, burst pressure of up to 28 atmospheres. And it is, uh, with the hydrophilic coating, relatively easy to deliver in these types of complex cases. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Again, thank you to the organisers for uh, uh, asking me to present. Um, open to, to any questions from you all. Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Chenzo. Uh, two uh, uh, perfect educational cases uh, for us. Uh, as, uh, as always, you know, at, um, Second first artery CTO is always difficult because of the uh, because of the digital uh, digital small uh, vessel and the digital bifurcation and the proximal segment have the maybe have the cast fired maybe the tortures and also the angled with the left man. So uh, yes. if you 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 will we want to touch the the second first artery CTO we have to we choose the. The um, um, passive uh, backup force of getting cast, you know, and uh, with the maybe we 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 use the um, get Zena to to increase the support uh, force. And um, my question is the, when to uh, when to start the blame technique if the uh, balloon uh, can cross the uh, CTO body. Um, if if we we don't get the and the uh, nasal or uh, rotational hysterectomy. Winter, yeah, winter. I think uh, look, I, I think that's a very good question, and I think that sometimes it's quite hard to predict um, what techniques you're going to use before you start, because especially with a CTO, uh, you know there are certain characteristics from the JCTO scoring system that you can that you can use to kind of uh, at least understand what your outcome might might be and how far up you're going to progress through an algorithm. But often it's only when you're in the case uh, and you've got your wires and your microcatheters where you want them to be that you start to understand the true nature of the occlusion and what your challenges are going to be. And I think that I think that personally, I would I would generally always start with a balloon um, kind of approach in the first instance. But I would also but I would also try and maximize other things prior to that. So things like having a large bore guide catheter, having um, uh, uh, a, a guide extension system using microcatheters from the outset. So I wouldn't just start with a you know a guide catheter and a wire and then up slowly step by step. I often start with quite a lot of initial equipment to start off with to maximize my chances to get through. Once it comes to crossing a lesion and understanding how it's behaving with balloons and uh, equipment like that, will I then decide, uh, okay, do I need to now go ahead and, and, and up to the atherectomy stage? What I will say is that um, with atherectomy in general, ultimately, uh, particularly with road ablation, the concern always is that you might have to sacrifice wire position, especially if you can't deliver a microcatheter beyond your lesion. As you saw in my second case that I presented, I think it's never an easy feeling when you are um, knowing that you're going to now sacrifice your wire position to then do your ultimate atherectomy with road ablation. I think that is ultimately a balance of risk. You have to decide whether you're whether you feel comfortable doing that, whether you think other things are safe enough for you to do that. In that particular case, I must say, wiring the lesion was never an issue. Um, so I felt relatively comfortable that I can I can now, you know, exchange out to a rotor floppy wire, perform rotor blade without being concerned that I'm going to have a problem of getting back into the true lumen. But it is always a balance of risk that you have to adjust based on what's happening with the case in front of you. Yes. Uh, the, 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 the second case, uh, you know, if the... Um, uh, uh, what cause all uh, po- um, polymer wire technique, polymer wire closing the uh, CTO, the tight lesion, but uh, you know the American can't follow it. We we what person if such a rate you uh, change the uh, note wire? If 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 the the American case can't follow it. Yeah, uh, I mean, th- look, I think. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think that's that, that's exactly right. Is that you know understanding that that balance of risk um, about how easy it is to deliver things. I think again in that case, if you look at the if you look at the angiogram again, the, there was a lesion beyond our, beyond the critical lesion that we were, that was our problem. There was prox- there was sort of mid vessel disease which was not severe, and I guess you kind of feel that once you're through the actual uh, tightest part, 
you should be able to deliver and wire the vessel quite easily. So getting the rotor floppy oil, which is you know difficult to, to, to often deliver, was easier in a case like this, as opposed to a vessel which is diffusely diseased with lots of calcium around where you're worried your wire is going to start catching. So in this particular case, you know, the balance of risk was, was I guess, in favour of accepting the, the, the risk of losing wire position to deliver a rotary floppy wire to allow you to up, up stakes. Um, I must say, I personally have not had lots of experience with laser, so I wasn't keen to use laser in this case. At least with laser, the beauty is that you don't have to sacrifice wire position. So again, that that is uh, is reassuring. Um, but again, you know, laser comes with its own issues of uh, you know technicalities and things that can sometimes be a limiting step itself. Yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, Dr. Wu Yongjian, yeah. you can you can you can share yeah, the next uh, speaker. Yeah, this is very in, in, uh, this is a very interesting talk. So I think uh, it's the uh, so the Dr. the Chandra. So thank you for your the two cases you presented, and uh, I think the first case is the CTO case. The second one is the cut fat lesion. So uh, now personally, uh, I think it's uh, um, so the small profile uh, the 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 balloon. It's the better than the big one to for the for the uncrossable the lesion, but I I think it depends on the on the on the component uh, of the lesion. Uh, for example, if before the 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 procedure, we we take the CT 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 scanning CT scanning, if we find the cap is calcified, so maybe the first we should try with the the root blazing, and uh, if it's not identified, maybe the smaller and the smaller the the bloom uh, can be tried. Uh, for the second uh, the the case, uh, because it's not a CTO uh, uh, lesion, but uh, sometimes it's very difficult. Although you use the different, uh, all the the bloom is the not uh, cross. So I think uh, the root blaze should be the first first choice. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I must say I agree. I think you make a very good point. And I think this is very important for, for CTO operators or people learning to do CTO, that um, there is a lot more information you can gather from other modalities to help facilitate you. Uh, so certainly things like an echocardiogram, obviously assessing the patient from the point of view of symptoms, making sure they've got optimal medical therapy, functional imaging to check that you've got viability or inducible ischemia in specific coronary territories, but also CT, as you say, I think CT, CT in general for CTO is actually very useful to get an understanding of what the distal vessel is like. And now, you know, the technology has got as such that you can actually integrate your CT imaging into the cath lab as well. So you've got that information live and direct rather than something that you can only look at in your office before you start a case and they don't have that information to fall back on. So I think I think you make an excellent point about the use of CT to understand the nature of um, specific lesions. Now, I, I, I will hold my hands up and be honest with you and say that I think I did underestimate that uh, that second case, that right coronary lesion, I, 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 once it was wide, I kind of felt that maybe it was just more of a matter of support. And once you get support, things will evolve and change quite quickly. But actually, that lesion was so fibrocalcific that, that ultimately you're right that, you know, rotablation was really the next or the first most appropriate step to have done, despite the fact that we were able to get just the one alveo balloon across and, the, and none of the others. Just, just one, just one thing to add, um, uh, Nev. I think, I think, I think the the case you presented, you know, they're, they're excellent case. One, one very important thing to highlight for uh, operators that are, uh, you know, uh, trying to 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 tackle some more complex cases are the fact that a lot of these CTO techniques that are traditionally, you know, these these balloons are, are viewed as CTO balloons, but a lot of these techniques are actually very very useful in non CTO cases, as you demonstrated in your second case. So I think, you know, I think the the, the era where where you know we 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 silo this you know these techniques into CTO techniques, CTO balloon or or non CTO techniques are are actually over. I think these days you know with with the increased complexity of coronary disease uh, and the population that we are dealing with, you know the, these techniques needs to be you know more more widely adopted and people even even non CTO operators need to be uh, you know aware and uh, be proficient in, in using this, you know, this, this, this equipment. These small balloons are extremely useful, uh, especially you know, like, like your first case when you have 
a very tortuous lesion, there is a time that these small balloons become very useful because you know don't, you you don't have the support for you to push through. If you have the, 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 the tiny balloon, you know, can get through these little S band, and and they are extremely useful in my view. Yeah, I, I I would just completely reiterate what you've said. I think that you know, as you saw from my profile, you know, I'm uh, I guess I'm interested a lot in structural heart disease, but I would say that um, CTO intervention develops lots of skills uh, that you're very transferable um, and help you uh, with all your coronary intervention in general. So I think that again for the audience, um, you do have to have an understanding and uh, some experience of CTO. Uh, regardless, in my opinion, because it will always come in helpful and, and get you out of trouble when you're faced with challenging cases. Uh, Dr. <coughs> Changa, do you use the tip injection frequently or you just uh, sometime? In the first case, I see, but uh, we usually yeah. uh, are afraid to do so. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say, I, I am not a fan of uh, distal tip injections via microcatheters. I do it very, very rarely. Um, and in this case, I did it purely because uh, it, normally with CTOs, uh, you often have a good uh, retrograde um, options or re at least retrograde imaging. So you can set up with, with two catheters so that you can confirm your wire position by taking contralateral injections. Now, in this case, this gentleman's right coronary, when you when you take the angiograms, it doesn't show anything in the in the circumflex system, despite you know prolonged uh, imaging. The the only way you see the distal circumflex is him for, for him is actually via the LAD injection. So there was no real option of uh, of doing that, particularly once you've now um, crossed the lesion and kind of taken out any antigrade flow at all. So the only way to to be able to be sure about your distal tip injection here was by uh, sorry the only way of being sure of your, of your true lumen safety here was a distal tip injection now having said that the important thing to bear in mind is that before you do a distal tip injection try and get as many clues as possible that you're in a safe place so things like your wire finding other branches is a very useful sign that you are in a safe uh, part of the vessel within the true lumen if you're not finding that then I think you have to be quite careful about taking that risk of taking a distal tip injection because then once you've done that ultimately the case is now going to be over if you're not in the true lumen and you're going to have to be thinking about starting again once the vessel is healed so distal tip injection I think is something to use sparingly and understanding of the risks involved and only when you're when you're actually quite confident that you're in the right place within the true lumen of the vessel thank you Okay, so thanks for the wonderful case. So, so let's invite our last speaker, uh, Dr. Hango Minhas, uh, and he's going to give us a lecture uh, the smaller, the better. Let's welcome. Okay, thank you very much. I would like to thank you, the, the, the Brosmed, for this nice invitation. I'm not sure if you are listening to me. Yes? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yeah, yeah. The, you don't hear the okay. slides. Okay, so I will share my screen. Yeah, you can see it. It's okay? Yeah. Thank you. So, as uh, I've been told before, compact PCI require uh, several issues, uh, good skills and optimal devices, wires, micro catheters, extension guide catheters to obtain adequate uh, support, devices with the uh, intention of modification plaques, optimal balloons, and of course, stents. And concerning balloons, I think there are today, well, all the, the balloons or almost all the balloons are very good. And I can, I would like to uh, classificate another balloons as a top performance balloons. I mean, low diameter semi-compliant balloons 
usually it's made from vine balloon to open the lesions and uh, to allow the, then the progression for higher non-compliant balloons and stents. And for me, uh, Riray, Kazuki, and uh, the last uh, of the uh, HP balloon are more my top performance balloons. With the advantage of uh, this is a high pressure balloon. Uh, and I would like to present this clinical case concerning a 70, uh, 69 years old male uh, with a severe chronic obstructive pulmonary disease that was presented with a non STEMI. Its uh, ejection fraction was the presses. Uh, it presented an octal thrombus inside its left ventricle. Good uh, kidney function. This is the angiography. We are already with the double ejection uh, because there is a chronic total occlusion in the circumflex artery. You can see here in the right coronary artery a moderate but diffuse uh, disease and is already filling by epicardial branches uh, from its posterior lateral. Uh, to the, circumf the distal circumflex. This is done to grade injection <clears throat> on the left coronary artery. We can see a uh, chronic total occlusion of circumflex. It's a short one. Uh, it's not really ambiguous as a, it looks have uh, some, some proximal cap defined after the first marginal branch. There is also a second big marginal branch. And we can see also a proximal lesion in the LED and the mid lesions in front lesion in the mid LED involving the origin of the two very close diagonal branches. So uh, we have a three vessel disease, moderate lesion in the coronary right, the right coronary artery, circumflex with the CTO and the uh, uh, important lesions on the LED. This patient was not a candidate for surgical revascularization because of its pulmonary disease. So we decide to, con to, to make a complete uh, revascularization uh, with intention of the, with the, with the, with the treating of LED and the chronic total occlusion of circumflex using uh, the lateral distal radial access with uh, seven French catheters. So we decide to, after predilation of, uh, we decide to, to begin to LED treatment. Uh, first, predilation with uh, non compliant balloons and then putting a, a long synergy stand, 2.5, do a pot with a 3.25 non compliant balloon. And this is the immediate result. We we, we protected the, the second diagonal was the most important. Uh, and we can see that after put the stent, the second diagonal has some <coughs> compromised flow. Uh, we crossed the, 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 the struts for the diagonal, inflate a small balloon non compliant to O balloon. Uh, we can see that is a dissection on the, 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 the diagonal and uh, decide to put a stent, an Ultimaster 2.25 Ultimaster stent, not reaching the ostium, just to avoid uh, make more complex and uh, the, the, the procedure with a kissing balloon and accept this result with the Timothy flow in both diagonal uh, and of course in the, the LED. So in the same procedure, we did we advanced for the CT of treatment of the circumflex. And after several attempts uh, with uh, Carval uh, 135 and uh, different wires, we uh, we did it. We could cross with the filters XTA. Confirmed after confirmation uh, with the, this the contralateral injection. Uh, the position of the wire, uh, and after the uh, advance, uh, a small non compliant balloon. We did it uh, uh, after modification of the plaque with a non compliant 2.5 uh, balloon. 
This is the immediate result of the balloon. You can see the, 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 the second margin or the second big margin with a present, but with an important osteal lesion. And we decide to preserve this uh, second marginal, probably using a two-step technique bifurcation. So to get access to this second marginal branch, <clears throat> we use the double lumen, Sasuke microcatheter balloon, and with a run through, uh, we could reach this second uh, marginal, marginal branch. <clears throat> it was not easy. But uh, it was it was possible. We can see here, and then uh, after uh, crossing a small balloon, semi compliant balloon, we uh, optimize modification of the plug with a cutting balloon of over in 2.515, and uh, then <clears throat> decide to put an RC mission mission. 2.5 long one, 13 millimeters, distal in the distal circumflex, uh, not reaching the, the origin of the, uh, or avoiding the origin of the second marginal branch. So, uh, and because of the angle and using a two percent technique, we, we decide to put uh, uh, 2.5 Zion 10 from proximal the circumflex to the marginal branch. Did a pot with a, a non compliance VO balloon, casing balloon. And then <clears throat> we, the, the, the purpose was to put a, an, another RCD stand using a tap technique through the, the lateral stretch of the Zions. Uh, after, of course, uh, pre, uh, opened the, the, the lateral cells with the, a 2.5 uh, non compliant balloon. But we can see that the Orsiro stand didn't reach the distal landing zone. Uh, that was the, the, the proximal part of the previous Orsiro stand. And the proximal part of this new Orsiro was very proximal inside in the, into the, the science stand, too much inside into the, the science stand. So uh, I push a little bit. More and when I pushed, this is not a Norsiro mission, it was a, this is a Norsiro, normal regular Norsiro, the previous version of the Norsiro. And uh, after pushing, uh, we can see that there is a compression of the stand. You can see these are the marks of the balloon of the stand. This is this, the, the, the stand. So uh, I, I tried to retrieve. Uh, all the, the balloon and the stand uh, together, but when I retrieve the stand, we can see that there is a dislodgement of the balloon from the stand. Um, and after trying to uh, advance, because we have the, the, the wire that the, 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 the position, we didn't never be retrieved the wire. And after trying to advance an Ikazuki one, uh, a, a balloon inside the Orsiro it didn't uh, cross the compressed the, inside the compressed the Orsiro. So I tried Alveo HP 0.75 uh, and it, it advanced inside the compressed uh, Orsiro, uh, allowing for uh, an inflation uh, in the distal part of the Orsiro and the entire uh, Orsiro compressed stand. Uh, so it allowed me to, to, to inflate uh, 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 another uh, balloon, uh, 1.5 and then 2.5 uh, non-compliant balloon, just to optimize inflation or the, the expansion of the RCO, uh, the compressed stand. And it uh, allowed me to cross another stand now in a Synergy 2.5 using the original technique, the top technique I would like to did to do uh, with the or zero, followed by a, a casing, and this was the final uh, result. So this is a, is not a, only a, 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 a CTO procedure; it's also an example of how 
uh, although HT could uh, be very useful in some kind of complications like this. Uh, so for me, uh, although HP is an important tool, not in only in complex uh, in a chronic total occlusion procedure, but also in other complex procedure. Uh, due to its unique characteristics, mainly its ultra uh, low crossing profile and uh, uh, allowing for high pressure without uh, rupture. So this is my uh, my my presentation. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you for Dr. Hunger's. Uh... Uh, we has uh, had a uh, presenting as with a very impressive case uh, and this case has a uh, uh, very tight CTO lesions over left uh, uh, circumflex and after crossing with the wire and uh, putting the stand with two stand technique uh, but from while stand was uh, compressed uh, then with the aid of a small smaller profile of the uh, of the Balloon. Um, so fa finally, uh, use the uh, use the other balloon to fully uh, comprise the uh, the distorted uh, stent, and uh, finally finish the procedure. Um, so this is, is a very complex case. Uh, and what the, uh, and and if you don't have this zero point seven five balloon, uh, what the other method you could use? For solving the problem, yeah. Well, the good question. Well, I think the only solution is uh, advance another wire parallel to the compressed stent and uh, and make a crash of the the stent with uh, an auto smith compliant balloon first, uh, low 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 crossing balloon first, and then non compliant, and then uh, a new stent just to crash it. I think that's uh, the, the only option. Uh, alternative well okay so uh, how to avoid uh, this uh, kind of uh, complications how to avoid well you know oscillator stent is a, a, a very good one um, uh, because of its uh, very ultra low uh, stretch but uh, this, this version of oscillator has some problem for me I had uh, some some uh, cases of the stent dislodgement uh, that I I never had with another uh, other other stents of this kind of stents. I think the the new mission uh, improved this this kind of uh, issue uh, of the zero. So uh, um, in this kind of uh, uh, in this, this kind of uh, circumflex and to pose vessels, calcified vessels, a good modification of the plaque. And we did it, we, did, we used the, 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 the cutting balloon, uh, we optimized the, the, the procedure. Here the problem was probably the interaction between the Orsillo and the, the other Orsillo, distal Orsillo. Uh, so, uh, I, I, I don't know how sometimes you, you only can you, you need to solve the problem and you can't predict it you, even if, if you prepare very well the lesion. So uh, you need to have a good uh, material, good options, uh, different plans to solve the, 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 the situation. Okay, thank you. And also, I think uh, for this uh, uh, 0.75 uh, uh, auric, uh, very small profile balloon, uh, uh, if this, uh, uh, if this uh, side, side branch was comprised and the loss flow, but it has, uh, uh, it has a wire inside, I think we can use the small balloon to open up the side branch. Maybe this uh, may be another use for this uh, very small profile balloon. Yeah, I know you yeah. gave us a uh, case uh, other than you know the uncross uncross positions cro crossed by this small profile balloon. That's a wonderful case. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you. Make a conclusion speech. <laughs> We, we we can just say that out of wood voice. Okay, we can see. 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 Oh, sorry. So, um, so it's the it's my the the honor, uh, to make the uh, make this uh, the wonderful the, the session, uh, the conclusion. Uh, I I think now is um, the from uh, the beginning of uh, the PCI the technique up to now is uh, is more than the forty years, um, and the PCI technique is very it's well established. But uh, as to some lesion, for example, on crossbow, the, the lesion, so it's a still problem. So in the last years, so we have developed the many, many the, the, the techniques and to conquer this lesion. But today, and uh, we are realized the, the, the smaller, the, the obvious, the bloom is uh, much better than uh, the, uh, the other bloom, or the bigger, big bloom. But, I think it's uh, for for the for the PCI operators. So so this uh, is a really good news, and uh, so the, you know, this session. So and uh, all the friends. So they provide uh, some the, the cases and to share the experiments with the, this uh, the small smaller the, the balloon, and the, so here and uh, I really thank all the the, the friends uh, to join this uh, this session. And uh, we hope that in the future we can have the chance to um, <clears throat> to talk on uh, the, the more the important the issue in the field of PCI. Thank you again for all the friends. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> but a good good. Yeah, bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 bye.